Hey everybody, this is Jason Jeffries for the Alliance Project. I'm going to do a video here for uh, dead astronomers and scientists, uh, kind of open people's eyes a little bit. They always say, where's the professionals, where's this, where's that, where's the proof? And when you remember that our media is basically the fourth branch of the government and is a tool for control. So if you don't see it, you don't learn it, and you don't know it. So here you go. The world's deadliest profession. We died from a disease that affects one out of 100,000 people. Five days apart, they both went to the same university and worked together. So the odds of that are astronomical. Alan Sandage and Brian Jeffrey Marsden. They were warning about Comet Alanin changing trajectory. When uh, these comets went through, I showed you and I'll be on a leak project. I believe Nostradamus even predicted it from my understanding of it, but it hurtled towards the sun and exploded into fragments causing an EMP blast. It could have went very bad for all of us, and we'll just say that. University astronomer Richard Crow killed off in an off-road accident. Okay, so he helped launch the undergraduate astronomy program. And basically died in an accident. We know that uh, they like to make it look like accidents, suicide, um, fire. There, there's a couple ways you'll, you'll die. And I'm sure that uh, we could go through this list. But uh, let's keep going. All right, so the next one, he died in a moped crash instead of his Jeep. Okay, and they're both from Hawaii, and they literally uh, worked on astronomy in Hawaii, which we know has some great photographs. Another astronomer died age 61. Um, his proficiency wow. in computational, computational astronomy, calculating orbits of comets and asteroids, using their information. Basically, he had... Uh, inbound earth object facility that was very unusual and rare uh, had technology that they couldn't. Um, there's a NASA van that rolled and killed three people, okay, from their jet propulsion lab. South Pole Observatory, he was poisoned to death, he's 32. Um, this person actually if you followed my videos, you see where I followed the Saturn and Uranus perturbations, uh, just as they did with the Pioneer. And so did this person, Eugene Shoemaker. Um, died in a car crash, all right? But he uh, basically um, seen that this comet was coming and it, it hit Jupiter and caused a big fuss. And uh, yeah, he knew something. I imagine that this comet was being pushed. These comets, like I said, are just part of it, part of the system, um, part of the disturbance. Like I said, an electromagnetic field doesn't only pull. It's like two magnets of opposite polarity. They push each other. So that's all it is. Something's coming, and you're in front of it. You'll get pushed. If you're behind it, you'll get pulled. And that's it. Uh, as they come in, they discharge electromagnetic charges and they basically charge up the whole time and come and discharge it on the sun. After his death, the next day his lab was burnt to the ground. There's an astronomer that worked with him. Robert Harrington. Okay, he actually referenced him in his papers his official papers that I've shown you. 
And if you're curious to look at those papers where he said he found them, you can, they're online. Um, this was 20 people killed in a cable car from France. It fell 2,600 meters and killed people. David Burstein, who's an astronomer, crashed. He was actually crushed to death by, uh, I'm guessing, some kind of machine. But he wrote crushed to death. That was the highlight of use, use of term. James Elliott. Edwin Salpeter. By the way, uh, Robert Harrington's wife even believes that he was murdered. So call that a hoax all you want. He was in excellent condition. And absolutely, you're not young when you're a talented astronomer that has prestige. Okay, so they all worked together, and they all died together. All right, so one moment here while I pull up some more things for you here. Okay, so Cambridge professor has made an astonishing claim that three scientists investigating the melting of the Arctic ice may have been assassinated within the space of a few months. Professor Peter Wadhams said he feared being labeled a loony over his suspicion that the deaths of the scientists were more than just an extraordinary coincidence. But he insisted that the trio could have been murdered and hinted that the oil industry or el else sinister government forces might be implicated. Three scientists he identified, Seymour Laxon, Catherine Giles, both climate scientists at uh, University of College of London, and Tim Boyd, the Scottish Association for Marine Science, all died within the space of a few months in early 2013. Professor Laxon fell down a flight of stairs, just like Father Malachi, at a New Year's Eve party in Essex, while Dr. Giles, when she was in a collision with a lorry when, and when cycling to work in London, so I guess she was on a bike. Dr. Boyd is thought to have been struck by lightning while walking to Scotland. Professor Wadham said that in the weeks that Professor Laxon's death, he believed he was targeted by a lorry which tried to force him off the road. He reported the incident to the police. So he actually called the cops that this thing actually tried to hit him on his pedal bike while he's riding. So in the past several weeks, a number of controversial natural health doctors have died under mysterious circumstances. Some of them have even had recent encounters with federal agents and bureaucracies. Two weeks ago, the sting, the string of mysterious deaths began with Jeff Bradstreet, MD. He was found in a river with a gunshot wound to his chest. The police claimed the gunshot wound was self-inflicted and the death was a suicide. However, B Bradstreet's family suspects foul play. Last week, members of the family set up a donation page to find the answers of many questions leading up to the death of Dr. Bradstreet, including an exhaust exhaustive investigation into the possibility of foul play. In just one week, the page had already managed to raise over $25,000, many of those donations coming from former patients who were helped by Broad Street's controversial treatments. Another death came on Father's Day, June 21st, when Dr. Bruce Hindendel, DC, PhD, of the Miami area was found dead in his car with no explanation of how it happened. As of right now, there are even fewer details about the circumstances around Hendon's death as there are about the death of Broad Street. To make matters even worse, even more suspicious, both doctors had run-ins with the feds due to their unconventional treatments, which both had been known to help people. In fact, just weeks before the death of Brad Street's office was raided by the FDA. If two doctors in the same field, same region of the country, in the same short time span was not suspicious enough, Dr. Teresa Sievers, another natural health doctor from Florida, also died under mysterious circumstances earlier this week. 
According to Sears' website, she also specialized in holistic health treatments. She was allegedly murdered by an unknown attacker in an upscale neighborhood that experiences very little crime. Okay. Alberto Bihar, robotic, robotics expert at NASA, NASA and at the, GB, uh, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, died instantly when a single-engine plane nosedived shortly after takeoff Friday in Van Nuys Airport. He worked on two Mars missions and spent years researching how robots work in harsh environments like volcanoes and underwater. As part of the NASA team exploring Mars and the Curiosity rover, Bihar was responsible for a device that detected hydrogen on the planet's surface as the Mars as the Mars rover did. 47-year-old NASA scientist Alberto Bihar helped to prove that there had once been water on Mars, according to the sad Daily Mail published to announce his recent death in a plane crash that happened on Friday in Los Angeles, California. While plane crashes do happen and scientists do die, Bihar has now been known to a very long list of scientists who have met untimely deaths prematurely. Uh, so basically, that that's a uh, that's a good one right there. When there when there's a plane crash, he worked on Mars rover. He actually discovered uh, probably the zircon and things on the surface of Mars, or helped break it down and prove it scientifically that you need a huge, vast body of water to create zircon, as we only have very few deposits of it on Earth under very large bodies of water. John Roberts Rogers, tropical disease expert in the National Institute of Health. Martin Rogers was found near his car wrecked down an embankment in Western Maryland on Thursday. When he left for his home for a renowned research center near DC, no word of the cause of death. Okay. Um, we're just gonna go down through. AIDS and Ebola expert, nuclear engineer, University Professor of Astronomy and Astrophysics, cervical cancer va vaccine creator or pioneered in it, PhD in electrical engineering with ex expertise in gallium nitride, weapons expert, firefighters find charred body of murdered pediatrician who was hogtied, strangled, and set to fire in our basement, off-road accident, shot in the head, result of being attacked during a home invasion, boating accident on the Potomac River, apparent heart attack, drowned in the swimming pool of a hotel, Russian plane crash, apparent suicide off a bridge, unknown illness, car crash, assassinated, We'll read this one. When a remote control bomb inside a motorcycle near his car was detonated, the professor of nuclear physics at Tehran, Tehran University was politically active and his name was on the list for Tehran University staff who supported Ms. Hussein Mousavi's, according to Newsweek. The London Times reports that Dr. Ali Mohammadi told his students to speak out against the unjust elections. He stated that we had to stand up. Last seen December 30th, found dead at a landfill. Alzheimer's disease researcher, dead. Died, was found dead of apparent suicide by cyanide. Died, died, shot and killed. Home invasion. Died at the hand of a neurobiologist. Died at the hand of a neurobiologist, the same names. Died at the hand of a neurobiologist, same names. Murdered three fellow scientists after being denied tenor. Tenure. H1N1. Auto collision. Plague. Respiratory failure dead outside of a cabin, massive cuts to her throat, suspicious causes, overdose, bound, gagged, and set afire, unknown causes, blunt force injury to the head, struck riding, uh, 
by, by an automobile while riding a bicycle. Blood cop to the brain. Hit in the head with a champagne bottle. Multiple stab wounds. Right, so she died after she was fired and they all rejoiced her being fired or leaving, whatever. Airplane crash. Stomach disease. Multiple stab wounds. Snowy weather crash. Shot dead. Fatal car explosion. Shot dead. Found hung. Suddenly developing pneumonia. Mutilated body. Unknown illness. Unknown causes. Unknown causes. Arsenic poisoning. Plane crash. Face down, dead in his office. Accident. Accident. Blunt force injury to the head and neck. Body found in three suitcases. Unknown causes. Uncertain exactly how he died. Died of massive a heart attack. Lung transplant complications. Disappeared. Vehicle accident. Killed by hit and run driver. One vehicle car accident. Slashed his own wrist. Complained of a headache and cause of death unknown. Body executed and removed by black government vehicle. Plane crash. Hit while jogging. Found dead at a blood spattered and apparently ransacked home. Found dead on Moscow Street. Unknown. Bandit attack. Murdered. Found in a coma. Found dead. Heavily injured. Found dead. Murdered by stabbing. Airplane crash. Found beside a three story structure. Four or five unnamed microbiologists died on the same plane. Cancer. Cancer. Traffic accident. Complications to diabetes. Abnormal brain protein. Shot and killed. Car crash. Murdered. Okay, so let me see one more thing here. Giant breach in Earth's magnetic field discovered. So NASA's thesis spacecraft had discovered a breach in the Earth's magnetic field ten times larger than anything previously thought. Solar wind can flow through this opening to load up the magnetosphere for magnetic powerful geomagnetic storms. But the breach itself is not the biggest surprise. Researchers are even more amazed at the strange and unexpected way it forms, overturning long-held ideas for space physics. At first, I didn't believe it. Finding this fundamentally alters our understanding of the solar wind and magnetosphere interaction. Magnetosphere is a bubble of magnetism that surrounds the Earth and protects us from solar wind. Exploring the bubble is a key goal for the Themis mission. Launched in February 2007, the big discovery came on on June 3rd, when five probes serendipitously flew through the breach that was just 
as it was opening. Onboard sensors recorded a torrent of solar wind particles streaming to the magnetosphere, signaling an event of unexpected size and importance. The opening was huge, four times wider than Earth itself. Particles per 10 to the 27th particles per second were flowing into the magnetosphere. That is one followed by 27 zeros. This kind of influx is an order of magnitude greater than we thought was possible. The event began with little warning with a gentle Gusts of solar wind delivered a bundle of magnetic fields from the sun to earth like an octopus wrapping its tentacles around a big clam. Solar magnetic fields draped themselves around the magnetosphere and cracked it open. The cracking was accomplished by means and pro process was called magnetic reconnection. High above Earth's poles, solar and terrestrial magnetic fields linked up, reconnected to form conduits of solar wind. The conduits over the Arctic and Antarctic quickly expanded. Within minutes, they overlapped the Earth's equator to create the biggest magnetic breach ever recorded. Now, what's that look like to you? All right, so if there's a big magnetic breach in our, in our uh, from something, and here's the Earth, sun will be on this side if the solar wind's pushing this way. Then, um, yeah, there's another object coming in. They, they're trying to discreetly tell you about a hole Okay, so South Pole, now we got one more. We, you can continue to read this, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some where it correlates. So this is November 3rd. The, week, uh, the world's largest, most sensitive cosmic ray detector has identified a potential crack in Earth's magnetic field. The weakness was revealed by a burst of galactic cosmic rays detected by grapes. Three during severe geomagnetic storms in June 2015. The storm was triggered by a plasma cloud ejected from the sun's corona. So, everything's starting to add up and uh, predictions are coming true. Um, one of my predictions I, I told you guys about was we'd have earthquakes in or around Australia, in or around Italy, and in or around Chile. And we've had pretty much all three of those. And not only were that, they were rare and like 100 year, 200 year thing events. They haven't happened, but they're not predictable like Japan was, okay? It was the one of the largest geomagnetic storms in re recent history, generating an intense aurora borealis, thwarting radio communications among the northern latitudes. The storm was strong enough to compress Earth's magnetic sphere for several hours. It actually knocked radio. Uh, off and what you see here 67p that's what uh, I believe they have us looking for I believe that might be wormwood as I showed you the trajectory and how it actually could be the possible dragon swallowing Jupiter because they meet up that's the that's the missing piece right GRAPES-3 MUON telescope is a massive array situated in southern India, a joint effort among scientists institutes in Japan and India. Date revealing, data revealing the cosmic ray breach was analyzed by scientists at the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai. Researchers published their analysis of the potential magnetosphere crack this week in the Journal of Physical Review Letters. Life itself has Earth's magnetosphere to thank. Its ability to block out harmful rays and particles flying through space allowed life to flourish but the latest research suggests it's not a fail-safe shield. High-intensity storms can reveal stress fractures, so to speak. Researchers suggest 2015 storm triggered a phenomenon called magnetic reconnection, whereby the magnetic energy is simultaneously converted into kinetic energy, thermal energy, and part particle acceleration. In this instance, the process was powerful enough to open a crack through which the burst of cosmic rays may slip through. Um, if you believe that, that that's very possible, but... Uh, I feel like the timing is just too perfect, right? Scientists hope they continue to work with grapes will improve. So as I was saying, uh, as this thing comes in, our radios won't work, our things like that. And here's uh, the precursor to what's happening. And that just happened uh, earlier this week. So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna be uploading this in another video shortly. Um, hope you enjoy. Thanks.